So today's video, I'm a little bit angry. What's your minimum specification? If you want an independent cloud services provider for home servers, VPNs, or clients, consider Linode and sign up today at linode.com slash techtechpotato for a free $100 60-day credit. A recent Gartner performance report shows the Node's topology offers almost double the database performance per dollar than other public cloud services. So I think in order to show my uh, geek cred, let's go with digits of pi. 3.141592653589732384626438339 Is that right? I think comments down below then. So ultimately, I'm not sure where to begin on this one. Um, a few of you who I talk to personally will know that I'm an avid follower of the world record for the number of digits of pi calculated. It's one of those, um, because pi is such an important constant in maths and physics, just holding the world record for the amount of digits calculated for pi would be a dream someday. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video. But the news coming out of uh, the webosphere the last couple of days is that there's a group in uh, Switzerland who have got the new world record for calculating the number of digits of pi, except it's not really a record quite yet. And it seems that everybody has jumped the gun, and I kind of want to explain why and why this is important. So first up, let's just go to the press announcement on the website of the research group who have done this. And this is what they have. This is their web page, uh, world record attempt at the University of Applied Sciences, Graubunden. I believe that's how you pronounce that. You know, and a big sign here saying the world record is broken. Uh, actually, let's move over to the English version of the website because, sorry, Google Translate doesn't do a good job in uh, German. So idea, I'll go through this quite quickly, but basically the idea is to calculate the amount of trillion digits of pi uh, the world record that they claim to have got here is 62.8 trillion decimal places. Uh, so the previous world record before this was 50 trillion, set by Timothy Mulliken, uh, who ran his own personal equipment. Then before that, it was Emma Hiruka Iwao. Uh, sorry if I'm butchering that, Emma. Uh, she did pi times 10 trillion places using Google's cloud platform, and she's an employee of Google one of their evangelists, and uh, they did a whole big promotion about how to use Google Cloud Platform to do things like calculating digits of pi. But here we have uh, FHGR. This is uh, the Davis Competence Center for Data Analysis Visual Simula Simulation. So challenge, we're talking, you know, this is the challenger, this is them, then Timothy, then Google, um, that's Emma, and then Peter Troop, who also held the record. Showing their status, they completed the calculation on the 14th of August. Though I'll tell you why that's not strictly speaking true. And uh, this is the graph of how long it took. Hardware, they said, or it has been reported in the press, and I'll get to this in a bit, that they used a supercomputer to calculate pi. Now, you don't need a supercomputer because the way that the calculation works, I won't go into too many details because it's kind of what I need to use to get the record myself. But one of the critical things is storage. You basically have compute and you have storage. To calculate that many digits of anything, you need to somewhere to store it and somewhere to store the intermediate calculations. So in this case, in order to calculate this many digits of pi, they're using two 32 core epic CPUs, fair enough, terabyte of memory. And the important thing here is 510 terabytes of disk space. They use 38 hard disks at 16 terabytes each. That's the critical thing, because throughout this whole calculation, yeah, it has a base level of how much storage it needs, but at some points it spikes up how much storage it needs, and you need to be able to cater for those spikes. And that's what you need the hard drives for. It can be run on Windows, Linux. This is their system that they used. Uh, let's see if I can get a zoom in picture on here. We've got... Um, the top server is for storing the final result, which is about uh, 60, 60 terabytes, I think. And then down here we have 
you know, a super micro system which is holding 510 terabytes or more than for the calculation. Um, and then inside the computer, you've basically got a dual epic with uh, a terabyte of memory. And this thing sucks about a thousand watts. And the calculation in total takes three months. It took Timothy with his home setup nine months. It took Emma using Google's infrastructure three months. They've pushed it almost double, or they have pushed it double to Emma, but they've still done it in three months. There, but thereabouts. They started April, so four months, I guess. And uh, the whole thing is the software kind of looks like this. I'll go into it in a second, but basically you're calculating pi. You're using an algorithm, and then you have you know sixty two point eight trillion decimal digits. The reason why they've chosen this number is this is pi times twenty trillion. So Emma did pi times ten trillion. This is pi times twenty trillion. Algorithm and verification. This is the this is the thing that has me on a sticking point. And uh, this is the team here, and uh, the website's all up. But it's this verification point that has me at a sticking point, right? So. Any time you do a calculation of a mathematical constant, whether that's pi, whether that's e, whether it's the golden ratio, the idea is you can't just rely on the first calculation you do. Most constants are calculated in two different directions. You need to have one algorithm to go one way and one algorithm to go another way. And the idea is that those algorithms are independent such that they both come to the same result. What this research group here has done is taken one of those routes. They haven't taken the second yet. And this is my big sticking point as to what's annoyed me about the coverage of this record. Lots of press, and even then, them, them themselves are saying the world record is broken. And quite categorically, it hasn't because the calculation hasn't been verified. Now, Pi is in a unique situation in where there has been a fast route to doing that verific verification calculation. You can run a calculation on your computer that will showcase uh, 50 digits of pi at any depth. So if you want to find the 10 trillionth digit of pi, you can run a calculation, it takes about a few days on a computer or even a day on the top ones, and you can get right to that, that, that 10 trillionth digit. So the verification method for pi, as has typically been the case through the seven previous world records, has been to do that final calculation to make sure that your final digits are identical to this second verification runs digits. And unfortunately, this group haven't done that yet. And historically, it's always been the case that you wait until that second verification has happened before you push your press release out. And this is what really kind of grinds my gears. So let's go through some more of these details. Um, this is the press release they put out actually two weeks ago, saying that the calculation had been done. It's now be it's now going through some internal checks. This is just what the software does. I'll go into what the software does exactly. And yeah, this is just an update near the end. And then this is the Greater Zurich Area News, and it's literally saying approaching new world record for pi des for pi decimal places calculation, and. It, it's a bit more measured here, basically saying that they need to do verification before they can have it in the Guinness Book of Records. It's a bit more complex than that. But the software that everybody uses to calculate pi is called Ycruncher. You've probably seen it in a lot of uh, hardware benchmarks, in a lot of hardware reviews. All it does is calculate digits of pi. It's multi-threaded. It's optimized for AVX512. It's optimized for Zen2. Um, Alex Yi, the guy behind this software, he started doing it in high school. He's now in his early 30s. And this thing is over a half a million lines of code. It's very complex, but it does get the job done. And through this, the world record has been broken, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And the group uh, in Switzerland also used Ycruncher. So if their result is correct, then it's eight times. But the idea is that you download the software um, here's a list of all the records done by the software for all various different constants. And the thing is, the latest uh, for Pi is here. It's Timothy Mulliken. So not even the author of the software has verified that this Swiss group's record is a new record. Um, and if you notice, I'm here uh, you know, on, my, on my route to trying to find a way to do Pi myself. 
Uh, I've done a few records going through, and there's Emma's. Uh, she did hers in 2019, then Peter in 2016, and so on. And the whole point is uh, your software, you get an output that looks like this. This is standard high Y cruncher output. Um, decimal digits, one trillion in this example. Uh, using swap mode, that just means that you're using extra hard drives for your extra storage. And uh, this will probably need a few, a couple of terabytes of space. And you see begin computation, first stage takes it in for one trillion, takes two days, and then you go through hours and minutes. So overall, for one trillion digits, this system did it in three days. Then has to, because it does all the calculation hexadecimal, it then has to convert it into decimal if that's what you choose in the in the output. Most records these days do compressed hexadecimal output, so it doesn't need, necessarily need to do that. It does some verification to make sure that all these conversions are, are good. And then overall, it tells you how long it takes. CPU utilization, this is basically when you're multi-threaded. If you have an eight-core system, then you want CPU utilization to be 800%. In this case, we've got a multi-core efficiency of 50%. That means it spent half the time CPU bound and half the time uh, storage bound. So that's something you have to watch out for when you do these calculations. And then along with all the data, because this is kind of like the uh, metadata output, it gives you the last you know 50 digits, 100 digits of pi for your calculation. And yeah, this was done on a 16-thread system, i7-5960X. And you get a validation file, and that validation is uh, verified by Alex. And then it also tends to be that Alex himself does the verification on his on his systems. And that's generally how a Pi record works. But as I said, this Swiss group hasn't done that final uh, validation. And what annoys me is articles like this at Motherboard um, Vice. So scientists calculate Pi to 62.8 trillion digits, not verified. The world record calculation, not confirmed world record yet by Swiss scientists now marks the last 10 digits of pi. I have no words to explain why that is such a stupid phrase. That's like saying, OK, we've calculated pi, full stop. Now, pi is a transcendental number. It's an irrational transcendental number. There is no end in sight to calculate the number of trillions of digits of pi or quadrillions or you know, a Googleplex of digits. So say the last 10 digits of pi, no, the last 10 digits of pi of this calculation are this. And annoyingly, this is the sort of reporting that's been going on with this world record. So the team announced on Monday, they calculated the first 62.8 trillion digits. Again, not verified, not verified. Uh, started in April, uh, late April. Uh, high performance computer. I've seen some saying it's a supercomputer. It's not. It's just two servers. Um, 108 days. Uh, the last record took eight months with Timothy. And we want to achieve several goals. Now, unofficial. Uh, the university's website notes the calculating the precise number of pi is an unofficial benchmark in high performance computing. It's uh, so th th this kind of goes into the why is calculating trillions of digits of pi useful? Ultimately, for physics and maths calculations 13 digits of pi caters for most if you need really precise cosmological stuff 30 digits of pi i've seen some people say that they need 80 digits of pi what i will pull up here is a card to matt parker's video who talks about calculating pi to the pi to the pi to the pi to do that is actually really really difficult and uh, you need more so if, if you do pi squared in order to get pi squared accurate to say 10 decimal places, you need to know pi to 20. So the point is, when you go up to you know a tower of pi's, you need more and more and more and more digits to be accurate to fewer and fewer and fewer digits in that final calculation. So yes, you could use trillions of digits of pi for that. Beyond that, the best really ultimate point here is it stresses the system. It's a CPU test. It's a memory test. It's a storage test. It's getting to the point where it's a network communications test. It's a caching test. If you've got an infrastructure based around one compute node and you want to make sure that it has enough memory, storage, and bandwidth to that node, 
this is where calculating pi to trillions of digits helps more than perhaps anything else. But going back to uh, yeah, the coverage, uh, the researchers were not immediately able to request. Uh, high force computing can be used for machine learning or DNA sequence analysis. At, at this level, it really doesn't. To be honest, at some level, you can use it as kind of a random number generator. If you need a billion digits of pi, or if you need a billion random numbers between one and nine, inclusive of one and nine, you can just take some arbitrary def uh, you know, distribution of pi and get those digits. But aside from that, no, you don't really need to know. So according to their findings, the last 10 known digits of pi. So here, they've used the word known in the subheading. No, you. if you had known in there, perfectly fine. As it stands, that subtitle is misleading and wrong. We go to the Guardian article here. Uh, Guardian article is a bit more measured, but it still says that they calculate pi to a new record. Again, it's not a verified record. Sorry if I sound like a broken record on this, but it really matters a lot to somebody who follows this, who is somebody who does at some point want to get want to get the world record one day. And you know, researchers are waiting for the Guinness Book of World Records to certify their feet. I'd argue that because Alex, the guy who wrote the software, has been, you know, kind of semi the arbiter of these things. I put more weight in Alex putting it on the website. And knowing my luck, by the time this video goes out, the verification would have been completed and it's on the website, making this video completely null and erroneous. So we'll see. We'll see. But the one of the things you know I've said in this video is that at some point I want to get this world record. Um, it would just be a fun thing to have on the CV, and I've got the compute, I've got the memory. The only thing really missing is the storage. And that if you've tried to buy storage recently, Chia Farming has kind of blown the prices of that up, and that's really annoyed me to no end. Even if I bought them as a business expense, um, that's still a lot of money. And to be honest, thank you all for watching these videos, going through the ads, for those of you on YouTube Premium, for those of you who support me on Patreon, thank you so much, because I really want to invest a good amount of those funds into this project at some point. If you happen to be a hard drive distributor, or you're willing to donate me several hundred terabytes of flash storage, satisfied with me putting petabytes of data rights through that array, for the sake of this record, and you want a named credit on the record, please get in touch. It would really, really help motor this along, and let's see what we can come up with. I am already speaking to a couple of people about how we can get this record and how we can actually absolutely blow it out the water. I mean, the thing here is, in order to get 62 trillion uh, or 50 trillion or 32 trillion, it takes between three and eight months, depending on your hardware. If you profile this um, this accurately and you can get hold of the right hardware, I'm sure that we can hit something much higher, much quicker. And uh, I want it to be on the cards. I do want to get it before at some point somebody blows it out far beyond. I mean, let, let, let's be honest. If somebody really wanted to get this record and they had all the facilities that say Amazon, Baidu, uh, Azure, Tencent, if somebody like that wanted to get one of these records, they could, and it'd be really easy for them, assuming they could justify pulling you know, that amount of storage out of that ecosystem. But until that point, yeah, dream goal for me would be to get this record. And it's through you guys that hopefully we can make that dream come true. But until that point, here's old man shouting at Pi signing off. Thank you all for watching. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have now a private Discord server. And if you want access to that, become a Patreon member and it'll instantly add you as long as your emails are linked. You can join the Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month and it all goes back into helping the channel. Thank you for your support.